Hello, everyone. Welcome to the UBC Learning Circle, a partnership with the First Nations Health Authority to, for today's special session. Um, welcome back to a couple of the sites who were on this morning session. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome the First Nations Health Authority and the First Nations Health Director Association representative. Um, today we have Christine Stoller, the um, um, FN, the First Nations Health Directors Association Secretariat. And we're also joined by John Ma. He is the Vice President of the First Nations Health Benefits. A former federal public servant with Health Canada, John has dedicated 16 years of his professional career to the area of First Nations Health. He most recently held the position of Director, Non-Insured Health Benefits in the Alberta region. A registered pharmacist, he received his Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences from the University of Alberta and began his clinical practice in Edmonton. After working a few years in an urban setting, he accepted the challenge of designing, constructing, and operating a full-service retail pharmacy for Big Stone Cree Nation in northern Alberta. He is a dedicated husband and father of three children. When not in the office, he enjoys playing hockey, golf, and spending time with his family. So thank you very much for joining thank us you. today. I look forward to today's session. So I will actually turn it over to Christine really quick. And just one other point I want to make. So um, is about the question period. So if we could hold our questions to the end of the session, John will do the presentation, and then at the end, we'll have the question and answer period. Okay, so Christine, is there? Sure. Um, good afternoon. I just wanted to say hello and to uh, welcome all of our members to this webinar session. Uh, if, just to set a little bit of the context for you today, uh, we do have a number of our members, associate members, uh, attending our session. So thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day to attend our session. Uh, we're also uh, hugely grateful to John Ma uh, for when we approached him and said, hey, you know, we've received a lot of inquiries uh, from our health directors uh, and wanting to get more information and to understand the health benefits program a little bit more. We approached uh, John Ma and said, hey, would you be interested in doing another uh, great webinar? If you remember back in, geez, it must have been... It was May. I was May. gone for most of May. Yeah, back in May, John had done the original uh, webinar. It was uh, hugely uh, successful. We had over 120 participants. And uh, just by those numbers alone, we knew that there was lots of interest in getting more information out there. So um, as the First Nation Health Directors Association is wanting to support our members and um, knowledge transfer and sharing of best practices, we wanted to make sure that we made more webinar services available. So we did um, uh, sit down and speak with John, and John said, sure, we, you know, we'd love to be able to work and support the health directors as in any way that uh, possible. So we've talked about this at the Health Benefits Improvement Committee about setting up a series of webinars over the next uh, several months uh, to do um, focused discussions on topics such as medical supplies and equipment. Um, in, in this regard, we've started off with this specific uh, topic as a recommendation from the Fraser Region Health Directors. So a big shout out to them for helping us uh, get off um, on the right foot. Um, but we are looking for your suggestions. If there's other topic areas that you'd like us to focus on, we are looking for those suggestions. You're welcome to uh, type them in and um, Crystal will share with them with us at the end of the, the session today. And we can start to plan our next uh, upcoming webinars. In, in addition to that, we also wanted to um, let you know that we are recording the session and we are also um, taking um, note of all the uh, tracked I don't know how to explain it, webinar, webinar chat. And so we will have an opportunity, so let's say your question wasn't addressed um, during this particular session, if, it's, uh, if we run out of time, then we will be following up and posting it later and sharing all that information with all of our members. So I wanted to give you some reassurances and then if you were having trouble, technical trouble with your system, uh, not to worry that we do have it recorded and we will be posting it and sharing it with our members at a later time. I think that the yeah. last session is online, FNHA. Oh, yes, and uh, Crystal wanted me to remind you that uh, if you missed the, if we have some new health directors that are new to our session that didn't have an opportunity to see uh, John Ma speak in May, uh, that session has been recorded and is posted on the First Nation Health Authority website. 
uh, and you can find it, um, find it there. We'll have a posted link later. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to John and say thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Crystal, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, welcome, everyone, to the uh, webinar on uh, medical supplies and equipment. Um, some of you I've uh, met before at uh, Gathering Wisdom. Others I haven't. And I hope uh, to uh, meet with you um, uh, fairly, uh, fairly soon. Uh, when Christine had approached me to talk about uh, health benefits, um, we, um, you know, uh, there was the request to have the medical supplies and equipment um, uh, webinar, and uh, medical or uh, health benefits is a very large uh, program, and uh, there's a lot of uh, components to the uh, health benefits program, and so um, having a session on health benefits alone. Uh, is um, a great opportunity for us to to focus on it to get a uh, for me to give you um, an, uh, a background on it um, and um, and hopefully in the future that we can uh, look for opportunities to uh, talk about some of the uh, other um, benefits within uh, within health uh, benefits as well. So uh, thank you everybody for um, for joining us. Oh, how do I? It's not. Does this work? Yet? Is that good? Okay. So um, today's presentation, um, I'd like to um, walk through what is the um, uh, First Nations Health uh, Authority uh, Health Benefits Program. Uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit about the, um, uh, a little bit more detail specifically around medical supplies uh, and, and equipment uh, that benefit. Um, some of the, uh, the conversation will, will revolve around uh, medical supplies and equipment versus pharmacy. I think there's a, uh, some interest in understanding um, why uh, medical supplies and equipment, um, the, the benefit is uh, just seems to be um, a little bit different than, um, than the drug benefit list and, and it pro uh, provides a, um, and, uh, some, some confusion. Um, I'd like to go over the medical supplies and equipment uh, prior approval process. I think that's the process when a um, community member um, from the beginning of getting a prescription and walking them through or walking you through uh, what happens uh, through the uh, my office uh, or my uh, operations uh, unit in terms of how they provide the approval for um, the medical supplies and equipment and all the steps that are uh, that are involved in there. Um, I'll talk about uh, uniquely um, who can be providers, who can be prescribers, and, and then the use of our consultants to help us uh, do some assessment on uh, some of the requests that uh, come through. Um, there are some things within medical supplies and equipment that are exceptions, meaning that they, they're not on the list but um, that are still available. And then there are some things that are what we call exclusions, meaning um, that they're, they're not part of the program. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about the uh, appeals process and, and, and what um, community members can do uh, if um, they run into a situation where they feel that they need, want to appeal a decision that has been made by uh, the program. And, uh, then let's, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the health benefits and plans for the, uh, the future and, and a little bit of an idea of what we're going to do in sort of in the short term of, um, uh, and then uh, talk about uh, maybe in the longer term about some opportunities for us as the First Nations Health Authority to take the uh, health benefits program and transform it and, and look for ways to meet the needs of uh, First Nations in British Columbia a little bit uh, uh, better. And then we'll talk about um, some contact information for my team, and then we'll get into some uh, questions and, and, and answers. So here's an overview of the health benefits uh, program uh, and the benefit areas. Um, there, it consists of uh, seven main uh, benefits. Uh, there's pharmacy, medical supplies and equipment that we'll talk about today. There is the, uh, the, the, the dental services, um, the vision, uh, medical transportation, uh, crisis intervention, mental health, which is uniquely different than the um, mental health services that is provided through the NADAP program or through the uh, Indian Residential School program. So we, we need to be uh, clear on uh, which parts of the mental health program that are in, health Canada, are in the health benefits uh, program. 
as well as um, an area that we cover is the medical supplies and, uh, or sorry, the medical services plan payments, which is uh, the uh, health care cards that, um, uh, that uh, BC residents have. The uh, pharmacy program... Excuse us. Excuse me. Can you yes. increase the size of the screen? You hit a button. It's, it's like tiny, teeny weeny in the corner here. You hit a button and shrunk our screen. We can't see you. We can't read well. anything on. Is that happening to everybody else, Stephen? Stephen is our tech support. He's online, so. Stephen Raphael. Um, no, it's fine on our system. That happened to us before, but usually it's a problem with the individual unit. It's fine here in Hoisten. Can you try and hit your content button? I believe that is the button that may... Is it the content? Display. Display. Hit your display button, please. Everybody's okay on Adobe Connect. Okay, um, we're going to continue with the presentation. Um, Stephen is working on that, so sorry, John. Okay, Go that's ahead. okay. Um, so these are the seven uh, benefit areas that are in the health benefits program. Um, the, to give a little bit of background about the the health benefits area, the health benefits area through the transfer was done in two phases. Phase one was uh, that occurred on July 2nd, which included pharmacy, medical supplies and equipment, and the uh, dental program. And phase two, which were, uh, uh, was the vision, medical transportation, and, and mental health programs, uh, which occurred on October the 1st. One of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later, but I will, I'll mention now, is that within the, um, uh, the pharmacy, medical supplies, and equipment, and dental programs are... Uh, processed, the claims are processed through a, an, uh, a claims adjudicator and um, that process is uh, being uh, done with Health Canada through a buyback program. We can talk a little bit about that a little bit more um, and uh, what the buyback means in terms of transformation for uh, medical uh, supplies and, and equipment. Okay. So I'll, this section I'll uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the different benefit uh, categories. Um, one of the unique things about the medical supplies and the equipment uh, benefit is that they are broken up into uh, broad uh, categories. And within the broad categories, you'll, um, uh, it doesn't list actually any specific items. It just lists things generally like things like hearing, um, uh, hearing aids or uh, very general uh, categories of, of equipment, but not any actually specific items. And so in the, under the audiology program, we have uh, benefits that uh, it covers actually the hearing aid, but as well as the assessment for the uh, hearing aids and as well as any follow-up that, uh, occurs, uh, that, that occurs with the, uh, the benefit as well. There's orthotics and custom footwear. Those are things that... Um, uh, require um, uh, like could be foot orthotics, it could be other types of uh, um, uh, limb uh, knee braces and uh, elbow braces, those types of um, those types of things. Um, as well, this uh, covers the uh, assessment of uh, someone getting a custom fitted or a uh, fitted for a piece of equipment, as well as the equipment and follow up afterwards. Another category is the uh, oxygen supplies and, and equipment. Um, these are, um, it can involve the actual system itself in terms of delivering oxygen, uh, but it also can include the, uh, the tanks, the carts, uh, and the, uh, the tubes that, uh, that go along uh, with it. I believe in, 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 in oxygen as well, there's also um, the benefit also covers the delivery of the uh, large tanks to the uh, uh, community members home and um, and the pickup of the empty tanks as well as a service I get this to move How come? Oh. oh did 
to that. Okay. Another uh, category um, is pressure garments and uh, pressure orthotics. These are items like pressure stockings, people who have varicose veins and, um, and, and things like that. Uh, there are prosthetics for um, uh, items that are uh, for amputees and um, eye prosthetics and as well as some of the supplies that go along, which would be things like stump stockings, uh, stockings and, and things like that. Um, and then there's the respiratory supplies, and we talked a little bit. There's, it's different. These respiratory supplies are a little bit different than the oxygen supplies. These are uh, things like CPAP machines, which are the apparatuses that uh, are used for people who have um, sleep apnea and, and things like that. Um, and uh, so that's why it's a little different than the oxygen supplies. Another category is um, bathing and toiletry, uh, toileting aids. These are commodes, bedpans. These are things to help the, um, uh, somebody who may need assistance in um, uh, getting in and out of bathtubs or um, to uh, use the facilities. Uh, so that, those are the uh, type of uh, items. Cushions and protectors, these, these are items that uh, somebody may need uh, in, ter in terms of uh, for in their wheelchairs or, um, uh, and, th and things like that, just uh, hard cover protectors that, uh, for them to protect their uh, areas that they may bump. Environmental aids and mobility aids. And I think the mobility aids is, a, is an area that I think it's accessed uh, fairly often. These are things like walking aids, canes, and, uh, and, and wheelchairs. And so these uh, items, the walking aids, they're also uh, you know, clearly large items. They sometimes require fittings. Um, so the, the, uh, uh, the service would require the, uh, the assessment, the fitting, as well as the follow-up and, uh, and the, the delivery of the item to the individual's home. Ostomy supplies and devices, these are um, uh, items that um, for um, somebody, they just have, where could be um, uh, uh, belt pouches, seals, there's uh, urinary supplies, which are catheters, incontinence supplies, which are the incontinence pads and the range of items that, uh, belong, uh, that go along with that. Wound dressing is a very, very large area. The, the um, wound dressing area is one that um, has a wide range of dressings, and if you've ever walked into a, a pharmacy or a home care supply place, there's such a wide range of devices or uh, uh, bandages and, and, and things like that that are, uh, are within this, uh, this area. And then there's the low vision aids, which are uh, uh, magnifiers and, and, and things like that. As I mentioned, that uh, within the medical supplies and equipment area, it covers not only just goods, there's there's their services and in some uh, benefits that may also cover the delivery. And so within this uh, benefit area, we talk a have a little bit of, um, uh, uh, there's the purchase of the device. There sometimes, in some cases, um, the device isn't something that is needed long t uh, for, for uh, long term. And so we, the, there's an opportunity to rent uh, device and, and the program will pay for the rental of the uh, the equipment, and then in a lot of cases that um, uh, if uh, for through wear and tear of um, the the device that uh, the piece of equipment may require some uh, repair rather than purchasing a new one, um, the uh, there may be some repair uh, that is required uh, within the window of uh, before the item uh, needs to be uh, replaced. Um, the repair is a little bit different than uh, and something that um, whether it's a, a manufacturer defected warranty or whether it's a warranty that should be covered by a, uh, the provider themselves. If it's a custom made item and, and it doesn't quite fit, we're really not looking to repair it. It should be something that is covered under the warranty uh, by the provider in the uh, first place. The, the repair is really for something that is um, if it's a five-year item and in year three it's sort of worn out a little bit, we can kind of uh, look at uh, paying for re repairing uh, uh, it. Um, the decisions, one of the things that um, for the medical supplies and equipment area, there are a number of different products that are out on the market. And, um, and 
uh, there are a lot of new items, and um, but the items that are on the medical supplies and equipment uh, list are items in terms of what the medical community would consider best practice for the benefit. And so, although there may be a brand new uh, uh, item that uh, seems to be uh, that is being uh, promoted by a supplier, it may not be the uh, what the industry or what the medical community considers to be best practice, and it may not be available from the program just because the medical community doesn't see it as the uh, the way to actually treat the uh, the, the the condition. And so this is a unique um, thing that um, that it's, you'll see that it's available for sale or something in the um, in your pharmacy or in the home care uh, supply store, but it's not available through the program purely because it's not considered industry best practice. Um, one of the areas of um, concern that we hear from community members frequently is the, um, the is that through the uh, health benefits program, there should not be a community member that is expected to pay for any of the items in advance. Um, there are many providers that we deal with um, that do not seek advance payment uh, from our uh, uh, program participants and uh, we don't uh, encourage and we, we discourage um, uh, providers from doing any extra billing or a seeking any type of uh, deposit or anything in, in advance. Um, uh, we feel that there are a number of providers out there that do adhere to our health benefits program in its entirety and, and doesn't seek those payments and I would encourage uh, you to um, uh, relay that message to some of the community members to say that uh, we, you know, that there are providers out there that if they're running into some, uh, some difficulty. If the provider is one and they really want to work with the provider and the provider is insisting on a deposit or desisting on uh, payment up front, I would encourage the community member to just make sure that they will get reimbursement for it before they put the deposit. And then if it does it's something that is uh, uh, reimbursable, then uh, the health benefits program will reimburse them for the, uh, for the cost of the, of the goods. What I've included in the bottom is the medical supplies and equipment list. It's the link to the Health Canada uh, website, which uh, have, provides a complete listing of the items that are provided through the um, uh, health benefits program. And you might be asking why are we directing you to the Health Canada website. And, and this is what I was alluding to before about the buyback arrangement. Medical supplies and equipment is one of those benefits that we um, are in the buyback arrangement with, which limits our ability to change what is available and what is not available. And so uh, because we are buying that service back from Health Canada, we, are, we, we have to continue to use, what they're, use their list, and which is why we've directed you to their uh, Health Canada website. So in this uh, slide, I wanted to sort of give a little bit of comparison to pharmacy. The pharmacy is probably the most accessed um, benefit within the health benefits program. And most people have, uh, if they understand or have, have access to the program or have any experience with the program, it's usually uh, related to pharmacy and there's a better understanding of that. And so I wanted to show a uh, comparison between the medical supplies and equipment program and uh, the pharmacy program. The first point is that the medical supplies and equipment benefits is processed through the same computer system as the pharmacy benefit, which is the HICPS program. As I mentioned, it is the uh, system that we are uh, accessing through uh, buyback which then again limits our, our ability to, um, to transform the, uh, the program and so that's uh, the first thing. The second thing is that the, if, if you look at the medical supplies and equipment benefit list versus the pharmacy benefit list, as I indicated, the medical supplies and equipment benefit list is listed by broad categories. And, the, um, and there's actually no specific items that are actually listed um, that are on there. They, it'll say, and the example that, that I showed you was wound dressing. It'll just say bandages, but it doesn't actually give you a brand of a bandage or the type of bandage that can be within that category. 
Whereas in the pharmacy program, the, the benefit list lists the actual drug, it actually lists the, uh, the dose, and it actually lists the company. And so that's the, comp the, the difference between the medical supplies and equipment and pharmacy is that there is no specific brand. So the challenge that, um, that uh, some of the uh, community members may run into is that the, the brand, because depending on which provider they go to and because it's a, only a broad category, Going to one provider versus another provider, they may provide a different brand. The different brand may have a different price point, and then therefore the different brand may also have a different quality of the of, of product as as well, because it's because of the broad category, they have the discretion to use whatever brand fits within that, that their whatever they they tend to carry for an example of uh, a um, a wound dressing or even a wheelchair. One provider may carry one brand of wheelchair that may be of one quality. Another provider may carry another brand of wheelchair which may be of a, of, of a slightly different uh, quality. And so that's uh, something to, to, to keep in mind. The medical supplies and equipment benefits um, uh, and pharmacy benefits are both prescribed. But in the medical supplies and equipment uh, program, there is an extra step where uh, the physician, uh, where it needs to be a f another, there needs to be further assessment by a more specific professional, such as an occupational therapist or an audiologist, to actually provide the proper product and the proper uh, fitting of the uh, the product. The extra step is there to um, provide the, the expertise. A physician may um, only recognize that the person requires a certain benefit but doesn't have the expertise to select the type of product that, um, or the type of hearing aid or, or to do the, the, the assessment of that. They, they, they write the prescription for the, uh, that the person needs something then the uh, the next health professional then takes it and then does the further assessment uh, with it. And then, um, as we, we sp spoke earlier, because of the, the diversity of the medical supplies and equipment items, uh, prior, prior approval uh, and, or predetermination or special authorization is uh, necessary for almost all items um, in the medical supplies and equipment um, program. And that's the, the program that Health Canada has uh, set up. One of the reasons for that is, is that because the physician prescribes the item, the assessor is, no, is, at this, is also the same person as the person that owns the business. And the predetermination um, is a check to ensure that the assessment uh, by the, the uh, audiologist or the, uh, the assessor of, of the business is um, actually um, uh, providing items that is necessary to the and not uh, over pro, um, providing uh, because they they have a, a business interest in in providing the uh, the assessment. So when I spoke earlier about the medical supplies and equipment program, which is a little bit different than the uh, pharmacy benefit, where most of the items that are provided through the this benefit area requires a prior approval process. And so what I wanted to do is walk you through the steps that are um, involved in um, having a medical supplies and equipment benefit uh, approved. The first step is that the, uh, the community member or the uh, BC First Nations individual um, needs to see a prescriber um, to, to get a prescription for the, uh, for the item. As we mentioned that um, through medical supplies and equipment there is the additional step of taking that prescription and then the, uh, through the second step of uh, taking it to an, an authorized um, uh, provider um, to, to have it assessed, um, to have the, um, uh, the person assessed by the uh, specific audiologist or respiratory therapist or, um, uh, or maybe even a wound care, uh, wound care nurse. The health professional will then take the assessment and then make recommendations of based on their condition, 
based on uh, the uh, the individual, it will say these are the items or this is the item that the uh, the individual needs, and they will prepare an assessment that um, um, and and a um, an assessment form. The first, the individual will then uh, take the uh, assessment to a, um, uh, a medical supplies and, and equipment provider. Sometimes it's the same place, sometimes it's a different place. And then the provider then will then look at the, um, uh, which products that they, that, that they need. And then the provider will complete the paperwork that um, is required to, to and, and fax it and send it to the uh, First Nations Health Authority Health Benefits Office for prior approval. Once it's received by the office, um, the health benefit staff will review the request and then determine the eligibility based on the program guidelines. And in many of the areas within the, the uh, medical supplies and equipment program, uh, the, prog the benefits are what we call frequency based. There are some items that you can get every year, there are some items that you get every two years, and then some every five. And so that's the, the, the first check that the, uh, the health benefit staff will, uh, will look at. Sorry, how do I go back? He's running through the video conference, so there might be a slight lag. Okay. And so, if necessary, um, the health benefits program will may refer the um, the request to a medical consultant or a professional for an opinion. And so, that's more to assess whether the assessment made by the provider uh, or the uh, on the assessment form uh, matches, uh, and the, that the equipment that has been recommended. Uh, matches the, um, uh, the the opinion of our consultant to say, yeah, that seems reasonable um, for um, for what was um, uh, what was recommended by the uh, and, and the cost of the of the items as, as as well. And the once the assessment is made and, and approved, the health authority uh, health benefits program will we fax the letter back to the provider, and then the provider can then uh, provide the uh, the goods to the uh, to the individual. Um, the First Nations individual uh, who receives it signs it and, and it's important for the individual to sign receipt of the goods because um, through the Health Canada program and, and later through the Health Benefits program we uh, may be auditing the, uh, indiv the individual provider to ensure that the product that we that the program has paid for it was actually received by the um, by the individual uh, them, themselves. And so that's just a, a check to make sure that um, what we've paid for did actually get to the individual that it was intended. The uh, provider would then complete the form and then um, and mail it to us for, for payment. And so that's the, the, the step that, um, uh, that, uh, that the currently that um, uh, individuals and, and the bat behind the scenes work that goes on in approving a medical supplies and equipment claim. I spoke a little bit about medical supplies and equipment providers, prescribers, and consultants. So, um, so who can prescribe to the medical supplies and equipment or to the health benefits program? And the uh, an authorized prescriber is somebody who is licensed in the province of British Columbia. And these are uh, right now we're we're looking at uh, the licensed prescribers are physicians or or, or nurse. Uh, practitioners. There are some allied health professionals uh, that may have ex, uh, prescribing practices, but it varies in terms of what they can and, and what they're allowed to prescribe. But the main prescribers that we will see is uh, licensed uh, is physicians and nurse practitioners. A provider is somebody who um, um, is uh, recognized by the First Nations Health Authority Health Benefits Program and has registered with our program to be able to provide those services to our um, uh, to to us. And and what we will do before we will let somebody be a provider is that we need to ensure that they have the necessary uh, that they are a facility that is able to provide the service to the uh, a level uh, to a, um, a a quality service to the people before we will let them. 
be a, an authorized prescriber so, or provider. So for example, um, uh, for, through the medical supplies and equipment program, if they say they are a, uh, a wheelchair assessor, we want to be sure that they actually have the staff and the proper staff in place to actually do the assessments before we will uh, let them be a, a wheelchair uh, assessor and, and a wheelchair provider. And it's just an example of, of, of uh, uh, making sure that the provider is uh, qualified to provide a good service. Consultants that we use, uh, these are uh, individuals that we will have in our office to review the, um, the uh, assessments that are, that are made. Um, and it just provides a, an, another opinion um, to uh, validate or to verify the information that we get from the provider is, is, uh, is accurate and, it, and it's within the industry uh, standard of, of, um, of how things are done. Um, currently, the, our health benefits program has consultants in both audiology and oxygen and respiratory. We are looking to provide, uh, to have more consultants to provide those services uh, to us. Currently, we, uh, through our buyback arrangement, we use uh, the consultants in Ottawa to do the other, other benefits, but we will be looking at uh, providing those services uh, ourselves and uh, to provide a, uh, a speedier response to, uh, to those, some of those areas. There we go. So we talk a little bit about the medical supplies and equipment benefit list and obviously there are lots of things that are on the benefit list. I think you saw that the, there's a wide range of categories and within some of those categories there are, um, um, it lists uh, things that um, that the program will cover, but there are, but it doesn't list everything, and there are lots of things that uh, come through the, uh, our office and 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 previously through Health Canada that um, uh, the provider or the uh, prescriber says that this is what the person uh, we would like the person to have, and one of the things is to check whether it's um, on the medical supplies and equipment benefit list. But not everything is on there, and so there is a process, uh, what we call an exception process, that uh, if the, the, which is done on a case-by-case -case basis, that if the person's medical need, um, uh, through a written justification that says that they really need this item, and even though it's not on their list, consideration can be given to that individual to have that item, uh, to have that item uh, covered. And again, that's done on a case-by-case -case basis, and that needs to really be working with the physician and the assessor to uh, provide the medical justification as to why an exception would be required in, in this case. And in, in some cases, uh, they, are, they are approved, even though they're not uh, openly or readily available on the um, list. Another category of items that are exclusions, and exclusions are items that are not on the medical supplies and equipment benefit list, but they are also not considered uh, to be exceptions uh, as well. And uh, some of these items that we've listed below as examples are items that are used for sports, and so we um, these are items that somebody may ask for, specifically a, a, a sport item that uh, is, is used, um, if they don't currently have an, an injury or don't currently have something, but they want it because they're, they're, they're playing sports. Um, work or education related things, uh, work would be um, somebody is asking for uh, protective uh, goggles because they need it to, for, for, for work. And so those items would not be, uh, be, be covered or a, a, sp a specific pr protective brace that they would use uh, for, for work. And then obviously for items that are for cosmetic uh, pur purposes. One of the unique things about the medical supplies and equipment program is that anything that is, um, that is permanently attached to the house is not considered eligible under the program. It needs to be a, um, so when we're talking about uh, hand bars and, and some of those things, it's uh, some things that are uh, usually attached to the tub, the commodes are transportable, but it's nothing that requires really big construction that, um, that is affixed to the, uh, the house that uh, are not, not part of the program. Thing to change. 
the changing on your end? No. Oh, here it goes. Okay. Um, so finally, the um, the uh, when we talk about exceptions, we talk about exclusions. Then we need to talk about uh, appeals. Appeals are uh, for if a uh, community member um, is has applied uh, for a benefit and they have uh, been denied a benefit. Um, there is an appeal process for the individual to um, to, to go through to have. Um, to, to present their case so that um, it may be uh, reconsidered. Um, there's a, there are three levels of appeal uh, within the First Nations Health Authority. The first level appeal will go to the uh, Director of Operations. Um, the Director of Operations will then review the, um, the application to see, to assess whether the staff that, um, that works uh, for the director had applied the policies and had applied the uh, and reviewed the uh, the paperwork appropriately to to make an assessment. If at level one the individual is not satisfied with the outcome uh, of the decision, with additional information, the, um, uh, then the person can apply to level two. Uh, level two will then be reviewed by what we call a health benefits appeal board. The appeals board is, uh, consists of myself, uh, along with the vice president of uh, policy planning and strategic services, and as well as the vice president of health uh, services, as well as um, any health professional from that uh, particular uh, benefit area that can provide us with advice um, in, in that area. And so then the, the, the uh, claim can be reviewed again. If after level two, the decision is still not satisfactory, there is an opportunity to appeal to level three and uh, that can be appealed to the, uh, to the CEO of the uh, First Nations Health Authority. An important point is at every stage at level two and at level three, it's very important that if those appeals are, are sent forward, that new information uh, be submitted along to help with the, um, uh, the decision. Of, of course, um, the more information that, that can be provided, the, the better uh, chance that um, a proper decision can be made at, at, each, at each level. So that's the general idea of what is the medical supplies and equipment program. Um, the last few slides I have is really talking about the health benefits uh, program and our plans for the future in, in, in general. Um, in the short term, from um, uh, with some of the, um, the restrictions that we have with the medical supplies and equipment program because of the buyback and because it's involved in the claims adjudication process, in, in the short term, our, through health benefits, our, our big plan is to uh, keep working with health directors, to keep working with our community members, clients, and providers to, um, to update the, uh, you and, and provide better, more information about what is the health uh, benefits program. We find that there's a fair bit of uh, frustration and, um, uh, and, and lack of uh, information that is out there, and we're, we're, we're going to work hard over the next little while to make sure that more of that information is out there getting to the people that are, are needing it. Um, the other big area is that we understand that through the Health Canada program that um, there has been great satis dissatisfaction uh, from community members about the wait times, how long it takes for the office to process a claim and, and things. And so our focus over the, the next little while is to really improve the time that, uh, thing, uh, that uh, an individual must wait to get a predetermination or a preauthorization. Uh, we know that um, from the original efforts that we've made since October 1st that wait times have decreased uh, significantly from the beginning. Uh, at transfer, uh, we ran into, into some um, technical difficulties, IT issues, and, and things like that, which created um, uh, a little bit of anxiety in the first couple of weeks of transfer. But since then, uh, we've had some of the IT issues um, resolved, and uh, we've made some administrative changes within our office to make sure that the processing times are, are, are reduced. And we continue to uh, work to make them even in, in shorter. 
Um, so, and overall, we really want to improve what we call the customer experience. We want, really want to make sure that all our staff are trained in, in customer service. We really want to make sure that when an individual phones the office, uh, that they feel that they're being supported by my staff. And, um, and, and feeling that they've been helped. They may not get the uh, complete an or the, the, full, the answer that they're looking for, but I really want them to feel that they've spoken to the right person and that the person has provided them with the support that they uh, really, that they, that they need in, in, their, in their time. Um, one of the initiatives that we are doing is uh, over the next little while, in the, in the next few weeks, uh, we are hiring what's called a benefit support representative. Um, this individual is specifically dedicated to troubleshooting and, and dealing and handling calls uh, from community members that may be having some difficulty, whether it's follow-up with something in the office or um, just some general information. And we're dedicating a person to make sure that um, their, their calls are handled and handled in a, in a way that, um, uh, that is um, in, a, in a professional manner. Um, as well as the, this individual will be uh, logging the, um, the, the, the call to make sure that, the, uh, that there is follow-up so that um, the individual who uh, may um, uh, be making a request that there, that there is somebody that at least follows up. And so we're tracking those uh, things, again, to improve the, the experience that, in, uh, that a community member has with our, with our office. Longer term, um, going through the program, uh, we will be going through the program benefit by benefit, uh, really to identify issues to date and really plan for, for changes in the future. And uh, this, as you know, the, the health benefits program is a very complex program. Uh, we have some benefits that are, that are in buyback, some benefits that are, that are not in buyback. Um, but as we move forward, one of the thing, the principles of the First Nations Health Authority is to really make sure that we have a level of engagement with the, with the health directors, with community members, to make sure that we look and, and deliver a, um, the health benefits program that really meets the needs of uh, BC uh, First Nations. And, um, and so through the Health Benefits Improvements Committee, through the Health Directors Association and uh, First Nations Health Council, we will be seeking engagement as we transform our uh, benefits program to uh, better, better suit their needs. And so we will be seeking the engagement of the, of the health directors as we uh, start going through these, uh, these phases. We really want to create uh, building relationships uh, closer with the communities. And so in some cases, we'll be dealing directly with the health directors. And in other cases, we'll be dealing through the Health Directors Association to get the, uh, the input from, from, from health directors. And then, of course, um, uh, when we talk about uh, longer term, we're going to be uh, always concentrating on uh, making sure that um, our um, uh, customer experience or uh, our community member experience with our program is, um, is a good one. And so we will be focusing and continuing to improve uh, the support area uh, so that um, uh, everybody feels that uh, they've had a good experience with, um, with our program. So contact information, contacting the First Nations Health Authority Health Benefits Program. Um, we, uh, there's a, for people who are in Vancouver, there's the 604-666-3331 number, uh, as well as a 1-800 number for people who uh, are, uh, for individuals that are uh, outside of the Vancouver area. Now, one of the areas that we uh, want to be, uh, we, we seem to be getting a lot of phone calls uh, uh, seeking help from the health benefits area, uh, calling the, um, the First Nations Health Authority the, uh, the more general line, which is uh, the, the Black Tower in West Vancouver. Um, for uh, if, if it's a, uh, a call that requires um, about a specific claim or a specific service, I would recommend that um, health directors and as um, community members call the 1-800 number. Um, uh, that is the, to the direct, uh, to the uh, operations office and th where they have all of the information to be able to assist um, individuals. Um, if you phone the, the uh, Black Tower office in, in West Vancouver, 
we will uh, get the information to the um, um, the operations unit, but it requires a little bit more transferring and, and the service may be a little bit slower that way. And so I would recommend uh, everybody phone the 1-800 number in um, directly in the Alberni Street. There's a health benefits uh, email. And so if there are specific inquiries uh, and comments, um, the health benefits uh, email will come directly to uh, our offices and we can um, uh, route it and have the customer, the benefit support person uh, get it to the right person uh, for, uh, for response. I'm done. I think that's it. <laughs>